Hello, in this video, we will learn how to solve any factor program in Python. The programs which we are going to cover in this video are all the programs which require you to find factors like prime number, perfect number, composite number, etc. These programs follow a similar pattern so we can learn to solve them using a common framework or template. So we start with a number n for which we need to find factors. Now you could be asked to write a program and take in a number from the user using an input function. It is also possible that you are asked to implement a program as a function where you get the number n as a parameter. So for our program, I will assume we have got n from any of these methods and I will showcase the code starting from this point. I am assuming you do know how to fit in the program in main or a function block. Coming back to finding the factors, a factor of a number is a number which divides into it exactly without leaving a remainder. How do we write a program to find the factors of a number? First, let's understand the logic which we will use. Let's say the number is 8. What we will do is that we will divide the number by all numbers from 1 to itself. Wherever the remainder is 0, those numbers are factors. Now we will write the program. We have our number n which is 8 here. There are two parts here. First is we need to get numbers from 1 to n. For that, we set up a loop with range function from 1 to n plus 1. This will run the loop from 1 to n times. Here variable i will give us number which we will check if any of them is a factor. Now we need to check which of them gives us zero remainder. We will use a if statement and inside it we will use a modulus operator or percent operator to get the remainder. If it is 0, it means we have got a factor. In this program, we are just required to print the factors, so we will just write a print statement to print the factors. Now we will use this program to convert into a template to solve any of the factor programs. In our programs, there will be some kind of initialization required before the loop. Then there will be some logic inside the if statement. Once we are out of the for, there will be some check condition. We will use this template to solve all the remaining factor programs. Let's first see a simple program where we have to find if a number is a prime number or not. A prime number is a number which is divisible by only one and itself, so it has only two factors like 5 is divisible by only 1 and 5. So in the initialization, we will write count and initialize it to 0. In the logic section, if the condition is true, we will just increment the count. In the check condition, we will check if count is 2. If yes, then we print the number is prime, otherwise it is not. Now let's solve another program using the same template. Write a program to check if a number is a composite number. A composite number is a number which has more than one factors, excluding one and itself. Here in initialization, we will have count initialized to zero. In the logic section, we will increment count. In the check section, we will check if count is greater than two as we need to discard 1 and the number itself, this is our program for composite number. Let's do another program, perfect number. A perfect number is a number which is same as some of its factors except itself. Example 6 is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 which are its factors. Here an important thing to note is that they are asking us to ignore itself as a factor. So we will make a slight change in the template so that the number itself is not included in calculation. So we will change the stop value of range till n. 
Now in the initialization, since here we are asked to find the sum, we will initialize the sum to 0. In logic section, if the number is a factor, we will just add it to the sum. In the check section, we will just compare the sum with the number. If it is equal, it is a perfect number, otherwise it is not. Similarly, we will do a program for abandoned number. Here sum of factors is greater than the number itself. For example, 12 has factors 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6, which if we add, gives 16, which is greater than 12. Here in initialization, we will initialize the sum to 0. Here also we will run the range function with stop value as n as the program is not considering the number itself as factor. In logic, we will just add the factor to sum. In the check section, we will just check if the sum is greater than n for it to be an abandoned number. This is a program for abandoned number. Our next program is deficient number. In this, the sum of factors excluding itself is less than the number itself. For example, number 21 has proper divisors 1, 3 and 7. If we sum them up, we get 11 which is less than 21. Here in initialization, we will initialize the sum to 0. Here also we will run the range function with stop value as n as the program is not considering the number itself as factor. In logic, we will just add the factor to sum. In the check section, we will check if the sum is less than n for it to be a deficient number. This is a program for deficient number. Next, we will do a program for pronic number. Pronic number is a number which is the product of two consecutive integers that is number of the form n into n plus 1. For example, 56 is equal to 7 multiplied by 8 that is it is a product of two consecutive integers 7 and 8. Here in the initialization section, we will initialize fact to 0. In the logic section, we will check if for any factor, if we multiply it by its next number, is it same as the original number? If yes, we will just set fact to that number. In the check section, we will just check if fact is non-zero. If yes, it is a pronic number. If you want, you can print fact and fact plus 1 also over here. If it is 0, then it is not a pronic number. Hope you have understood these programs. If you have any doubts, you can always join us at simplycoding.in. Thank you and all the best.